So if you saw my community post as well as what I mentioned on Twitter, I'm a little late to this post game video as I haven't been feeling the best over the last couple of days, which you might sense from my voice. Also, I was just sick in general watching the end of that game, but either way, better late than never to discuss this game and provide yet another Bulls therapy session. So a couple of interesting stats in this one. The Bulls shot 60.8% in this game. They actually shot the three ball well at a percentage standpoint anyway, 45.5%, and yet they still lost the game. According to StatMuse, that is only the seventh time since 1997 that a team has shot better than 60% yet still lose in a game. Now I'll talk about the end of the game and that insane shot that Halliburton hit and the Bulls final inbounds play which is frustrating because this was yet another winnable game that just didn't go the Bulls way in the final seconds but look at the end of the day the Bulls should not be finding themselves in these situations against bad teams on their own home court and yet another game that goes by without that sense of urgency that we've been looking for but here's the problem and we've known this for a while now but when you break down the numbers, it just becomes so abundantly clear why the Bulls can't win games consistently. We talked about the Bulls shooting 60.8%, normally a recipe for winning when you shoot the ball that well. And until you look at the numbers further and see that the Bulls had 74 shot attempts while the Pacers shot the ball 94 times, the Pacers had 20 more shot attempts than the Bulls did and had double the amount of threes as the Bulls putting up 44 threes to the Bulls 22. The Pacers didn't shoot the ball as well from a percentage standpoint, but they made more than the Bulls did 16 to 10. Why? Because they shot more threes. Now, we've been over this before because it happened the other day when the Bulls had near 20 less shot attempts than their opponent despite actually shooting the ball decently well. And what does it boil down to? Rebounding, specifically offensive rebounding to your opponent. Yet another game in which you allowed your opponent way too many second chance opportunities and second chance points. The Pacers had 13 offensive rebounds compared to the Bulls' 4 and outscored them 20 to 6 on second chance points. That's the difference maker right there. It's not that the Bulls aren't efficient on offense. Well, they have in some games, but not last night. It's not because they're not playing defense. It's not because they're making careless mistakes and turning the ball over. No, it's because they do not box out and fight for rebounds. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen this season where they let a long rebound bounce off the floor or let their opponent run up to it while they wait for the ball to come to them. It's absolutely maddening. I mean, we've been through it all season in terms of the stuff that makes you want to pull your hair out watching these types of games with the Bulls from a lack of effort, poor three-point shooting, falling asleep on defense, and of course, the sheer amount of second chance points they've been giving up to the opposition. You know, an embarrassing stat I saw last night, this one coming from Casey Johnson, the Bulls after last night's loss are now 11-22 in clutch games, which the NBA defines as a game within five points with five minutes left to play. And of course, we have seen our fair share of close game losses this season from the Bulls. The Bulls went 25 and 16 in clutch games last year. And what makes the stat even worse is their 11 and 22 record in clutch games is tied for third worst in the NBA with the Detroit Pistons. And the only two teams that have a worse record than the Bulls in clutch games are the Rockets and the Spurs. Literally the three worst teams in the NBA. Just bad, bad stuff for the Bulls all around. This season has just been something else. I mean, who would have thought that the Bulls from just a few seasons ago, when they were rebuilding, would be on the same level as this team, a team that was supposed to be built to win now, a team that had expectations to be better than they did last season, and a team that's had their three best players for the majority of the season. I know Lonzo Ball missed the season, which was a big blow to the team, like that obviously is gonna impact their overall performance. Javante Green has missed a lot of time, which doesn't help as one of their energizers. But outside of that, Vucevic has played in every game this season. Same with Patrick Williams. Levine and DeRozan have only missed a handful of games. I would expect the Bulls to not be as good as they were last year if we knew from the outset that Lonzo was going to be out the whole season. But this bad, 12th in the Eastern Conference, 29 and 36, seven games below 500, only two games ahead of the Orlando Magic for 13th. No, that's just inexcusable. Not when you have guys like Vucevic, DeRozan, and Levine. It's unacceptable. Now, I will say, the one positive about this game from last night is Zach Levine has finally started to look like he's fully back to his old self. He would have these flashes of great games here and there, and then would follow it up with bad games, but you're seeing Zach consistently 
play well ever since the All-Star break, putting up these stellar performances, much more efficient, a quicker first step, much more aggressive in attacking the basket and drawing contact. Another 40 piece for him again. But yet again, all that spoiled by another loss. So anyway, I say it's good because this is the Zach Levine the Bulls have been searching for all season. Yeah, I know he missed that last free throw that led to Halliburton sinking that three on the other end, but at that point, the extra free throw wouldn't have mattered all that much. Yeah, circumstances might have been a little different if the Pacers likely would have called timeout, likely wouldn't have used most of the clock and gone for a two instead of a logo three since they were actually behind. But who knows? Either way, the Bulls shouldn't have found themselves in that scenario, plain and simple. But anyway, Zach, one of his better games of the year, 42 points, 13 for 23 shooting, 5 for 8 from 3, 4 rebounds and 4 assists. Just unfortunate it came down in a loss. DeMar, 23 points on 9 for 16 shooting. You know, you can tell Billy has been wanting him to take more threes. I feel like you see DeMar, you know, getting set up along the perimeter and taking threes he otherwise wouldn't normally take. But yeah, it just doesn't do much because he still can't hit threes. It's just not part of his game, nor has it ever been a part of his game. Vucevic, you know, Vuce is, I don't even know. Like, yes, he's still productive. But it's the lack of energy, the lack of hustle at times that really bothers me. And when you see him going up against a very talented shot blocker in Miles Turner, he just never shows up well. But then you look at his stat line and you're like, well, I guess it wasn't that bad. Six for 10 shooting, nine rebounds, five assists, three steals, and two blocks. I guess it was a good game for him. Like, I don't even know at this point. Didn't hit the final shot to send the game into overtime, which we know based on the post-game press conference from Billy Donovan that Zach was the primary option on what that play was drawn up for. But give the Pacers credit, they did a good job at defending Zach to make sure he didn't get free. And Vucevic and DeMar were the secondary options on that route, and Vuce actually did a good job getting free and getting a decent look. But it's never going to be easy in getting a turnaround fadeaway three with 2.7 seconds left. Patrick Williams had a good game coming off the bench, hit some big threes when the Bulls needed it in the third quarter when the Pacers were going on a run. He finished the game with 14 points on 5 for 6 shooting. Outside of that though, the bench wasn't the best thing. Speaking of the bench, the other frustrating thing about last night was the fact that the Bulls were getting absolutely worked on the glass. And yet again, Drummond played six minutes. Even Derek Jones Jr., who has been good, a good option for the Bulls for them down low. And you get some energy and high-flying rebounds from. Also, only six minutes tonight. How does that happen? How do you not play some of your better rebounders when you're giving up so many second chance points? And the same thing has been happening for the past few games now. Anyway, it's just crazy to think that with less than 20 games left in the season, the Bulls now actually have better odds to land the number one pick based on where they currently stand at 8.3% chance versus making the playoffs with their remaining schedule at 5% chance. That's not even factoring in the fact that the Bulls now have a 34.8% chance of a landing in the top four. So a 34.8% chance of keeping their pick instead of sending it to Orlando compared to a 5% chance of making the playoffs. Just unbelievable how the season has transpired. Anyway, I'll have another video out tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. Also, make sure to check out my NBA channel, M1 Hoops, if you're like a lot of us and just kind of tired of hearing about the polls. A link to that can be found in the description. And as always, be sure to subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.